Hey guys, I'm so happy to be here with you this week. We had a few technical difficulties. We're a few minutes late, but it doesn't matter because we're so happy to be here with you today. I'm so happy that you're with us, but I would really love to see your face. I would love to hug you and I can't wait to be back again. I don't think any of us will ever take for granted going to church again. Um, I, I love being able to come to you this way. I love to be able to watch church online, but I m desperately miss being with you guys in person and being able to worship together and being able to learn together. So tonight is our last week of forgiveness. We are finishing up, actually we're finishing up March, even though today is April 1st. Um, we're finishing up March with forgiveness. Next month, we are going to be doing humility. So I'm really excited about learning all about what, how Jesus changed everything. And that's going to be coming next Wednesday when we start April. But today is our last week of forgiveness. So I want you to read this with me. I want you to say this with me. It says, forgiveness, deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Okay, that's huge. Okay, I want to go over our Bible verse for forgiveness. Our Bible verse comes from Colossians 3.13. Read it with me. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgiveness is huge. And we've learned this month, I've learned that forgiveness is hard. It's hard to forgive. But I'm so glad that I'm forgiven. So it's so important that I need to forgive. Okay, so we're going to go dive into our story from last week. We're on part two. Um, if you remember the story from last week, we kind of just stopped abruptly because um, I wanted to leave you with a teaser on what was to happen this week. So let's review a little bit from last week. Last week we talked about Jesus teaching in parables. Now, I hope all my Wednesday night kiddos remember what a parable is because a parable, Jesus taught in parables many times, but a parable is when you are telling a story to teach somebody something. And Jesus taught in parables to teach us something, to teach others. And during that time, lots of people were following Jesus around. They wanted to hear him. They wanted to touch him. They wanted to see him. And the religious leaders of the time really hated that. They hated that everybody wanted to see Jesus. They were jealous and they really didn't like that Jesus was spending time with all these bad people that did bad things. And so Jesus told this story to help those religious leaders understand. But it helps me understand so much as well. So Jesus told the story of a man that had two sons. And last week we talked about the younger son. He was the most important one in the story last week because the younger son was very disrespectful to his father and asked for his inheritance while the father was still alive. And it was just a slap in his face. So rude, so disrespectful. He asked for the inheritance, which was money, whatever that the father had. And the father gave it to him. So the younger son took all that his father had that was his inheritance, supposed to be his inheritance, and he went off and he blew it. He spent through all his money on food and having parties and just wild living. So he had ran out of money. He's in a country that is low on food. They actually were um, had a low food during that time. So he's hungry. He has no money. He has to get a job. And he gets this gross job of feeding pigs. And the Bible tells us that, or Jesus, in Jesus' story, that the younger brother was feeding pigs and he's like, I guess daydreaming of eating the pig's food because he's so hungry. That's how desperate he was. And in that moment, he realizes that he needs to go home, ask for forgiveness, beg for forgiveness from his father because he knows that the servants that work for his father, they ate better than he does right now. So he realizes that he had it so much better at home. So he goes back home. He takes that moment and he decides, I'm going to beg for forgiveness. I'm going to, you know, see if he'll take me back and let me just be a servant. So he heads home almost with like his tail tucked between his legs. He's got to ask for forgiveness. And he sees his dad in the distance. And his dad was actually waiting for him. He was looking for him. And we talked a little bit last week about how 
The dad really had a choice, and he chose to forgive his son. He was waiting there with open arms for him. He couldn't wait to forgive him. He was so happy that his younger son was back that he wanted to throw a party. He was like, everybody stop what you're doing. Go get this best meat, and we're throw, having a feast. We're throwing a party. So that's where we ended last week with, you know, the father being so happy that his son was back. He even said, you, you were dead and now you're alive. And he, you know, it wasn't even the fact that he was mad or bitter or angry. He was just happy that his son was back. And that just shows me, my father, my God's forgiveness and how he doesn't care. He just is waiting for me to come back to him. So we pause there. And I told you to think about the older brother. We kind of just left, and we don't really know what happened with him. We don't really know um, how he felt, where he was. So I'm going to come start back in Luke chapter 15, in the same place we were last week. And again, Luke Buckner, I always think of you because we always say, oh, we can remember where this story came from. You can tell your parents. We can remember it comes from the book of Luke. So, where is Luke in the Bible? I always want to ask. It's in the New Testament. That's right. The New Testament starts Matthew, Mark, Luke. So, it's the third book of the New Testament. I'm going to be again reading from chapter 15. But the Bible says that the older son was left. He was in the fields. He was working. Now, I'm an older child. Um, I have a younger sister. Some of you may be the oldest where you have younger brothers or younger sisters. So you might get it. I kind of get this character, this, the older brother in the story. So the older brother has, was left working in the fields. He had been. The whole time that his brother took that money, the whole time his brother was spending that money, the older brother was there working. He never left. He never failed his father. He was he honored his father. He, I just get him. I get that he was he was there and he was working and he didn't leave. So the older son was out in the fields. The Bible says he comes walking to his house and he hears this party going on. He hears this feast. I guess people, I'm sure there was music. I don't know what he heard, what sounds, but when you get a large group of people together, it's it's loud. Um so the older brother is like, hey, what's going on? What's that sound? He asked another servant. He said, hey, what's going on up here? And the servant says, oh, your dad, he's throwing a party for your brother. Your younger brother's back. I can only imagine the older brother and how he felt at that moment. I mean, there was probably a part of him that was happy. Oh, my gosh, my brother's back. He's, but then, wait. What do you mean my dad is throwing a party for my brother? My brother took all his money. What, did he, does he need more money now? I mean, I think of all these things that this older brother might be going through in his mind, might be feeling, um, might be thinking, who knows what he said. Um, but I feel like he has two choices. He has a choice here once he finds out about this party Okay, I can go in this party, I can celebrate, I can see my brother, we can make amends, we can move on, or we can, I can stay out here and pout and sulk and prove my point. Now, I'm going to ask you something. How many of you have actually done this? When somebody has done something to you, you've had two choices, right? You can pout, I'm not going to do that, no way, especially if it's your younger brother or sister, right? No, they can't make me do that. Or you just get over it and say, okay, let's go, right? You have two choices. This older brother had two choices. Um, I'm going to read to you, starting in verse 29, right after, well, actually I'll start in 28. 28, verse 28 says, but he was angry and refused to go in. So this tells me that the older brother is furious, which I kind of get, right? And he won't go in. So he's like crossing his arms and stomping his feet. Nope, I'm not going in. Then verse 29, or I'm sorry, the continuum of 28 says his father came out and met him. And 
my version says he begged his son to come in. Um, so this is where if your dad is begging you, please come in, please come in and see your brother. Let's just move on. Let's forget it. Again, you as the older brother have a choice to make. Are you going to forgive or are you going to stand out there and pout and sulk and be angry? Verse 29 says, but he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you and I have never disobeyed your command. You never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property, you killed and fattened a fattened calf for him. And he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. So again, I get what that brother was feeling. Dad, I've done exactly what you've told me to. I've done all your commands and you've never thrown me a party like this. How many of us have said those exact same words? You've never done that for me. That's not fair. How come he gets to do that? Or how come she gets to? You never let me do that. How many of you have said those exact words? Now, I hate to tell you, but that is where chapter 15 ends. Jesus kind of leaves us hanging, like I left you hanging last week. That is where the story ends. We don't really know what happens next. And that, to me, makes it so much more personal. It makes it to where it thinks about, how would I have reacted? What would I have done? Have you ever felt like that brother? Have you ever acted like that? Jesus did not tell us if the brother listened to the dad, begging him to come in, and forgave his brother. We don't know. Did he, did he listen to his dad, take his advice, go into the party, move on, show forgiveness? Or did he stand outside that party and sulk and pout and prove his point? We don't know. But let's think about that. I hope he went inside. Because really, what good would it have done him to stand outside and pout and sulk and pitch a fit? All it would have caused the older brother was to miss out. It would have caused him to miss out on the party, his brother, his family. He would have missed out on happiness. If he stayed outside, it's really just hurting himself, right? How many of us have been through something where we don't want to forgive? And maybe I don't want to forgive because it's not fair. Or maybe I don't want to forgive because they don't deserve it. Who does it hurt in the long run? It hurts me. It hurts me if I don't forgive. I might be missing out on some great thing, on some awesome time or some fun activity while I'm pouting and sulking outside. I think Jesus, well, I know Jesus, told this story and left out the ending because of me and you. Because we've had that choice so many times on whether to show forgiveness or not show forgiveness. And I know because Jesus forgave me of my sins, I have to forgive others. I don't have a choice. God wants us to experience the joy of being forgiven and able to forgive others. Remember, forgiveness, it's deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Let's say your best friend hurts your feelings. Um, do you walk away from that relationship? Are you done with them? No. No, you forgive them because Jesus forgave you and you don't want to miss out on this awesome friendship. You don't know where it's going to go or the awesome things you have that may be ahead for you and your friend. You forgive because that's what we're supposed to do. So we're going to go ahead and watch our video um, and then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about forgiveness. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much in a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. 
inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. When Jesus wanted to share something important, he often told a story to explain what he meant. Now, one day, the religious leaders were grumbling because Jesus chose to bring in outcasts and people who did things wrong. He hangs out with sinners and even, like, eats with them. Jesus knew their hearts. These men thought they were better than everyone else. So he told them the story of a man and his two sons. Now, the youngest son asked for his share of his father's money, and he took off. He spent his money on parties and all other stuff. But then the money ran out and he ended up at a miserable job feeding pigs while he himself starved. Desperate, the young son returned home planning on begging for mercy and working as a servant. Instead, his father welcomed him with open arms and even planned a party for his lost son in his honor. Ultimately, seemed like a happy ending. But Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. If Jesus were to tell that story to us today, it might sound something like this. The older brother, let's call him Will. He spent the entire day working hard, perhaps plowing up the packed dirt on a brand new field. Come on, Bessie, just... <clears throat> One more row. <sighs> Gotta finish before the light goes. As the sun slipped behind the hill, Will finished breaking the dirt on his last long row. I just need some water and a quiet meal and bed. Will trudged slowly back to the house and left Bessie in the barn with a bag of oats. If my slacker brother hadn't run off, I wouldn't have to work so hard. As Will neared the house, he was surprised to see the lights blazing from every window. What is going on? Will stopped, trying to make sense of all the activity and the music. Then, the back door opened. One of the servants stepped outside to throw out a bowl of scrap. Then she turned to go back inside. Wait. The servant paused. What's happening? It's just the party for your brother. The what for my what? You haven't heard? Your brother showed up this afternoon. Your dad had the fattest calf killed and roasted to celebrate. He is so thankful Jake's safe. A party? My dad is throwing a party? I'll let the family know you're back. What? No. No. I'm not coming in. The servant wrinkled her nose. <sighs> you want someone to run you a bath first? Leave me alone. The servant hurried back inside. Will paced as his exhaustion vanished and anger coursed through his veins. I work all day. Every day. Has dad ever thrown a party for me? Will stopped back and forth, fuming as the back door opened up again. His father hurried out. Will, here you are. Well, look at that. You decided to remember I exist. Your brother is back. He's okay. Well, that is just fantastic. We're all celebrating, but it's not complete without you. Come on inside. Will turned and looked directly at his father, eyes blazing. All these years, I've worked nonstop for you. I've done every single thing you ask, and you never even given me a goat to have a party with my friends. You never said you wanted. This son of yours runs away with your money and wastes it like a fool. Then he shows up and you roast a fatted calf and throw a giant shindig. Will's father sighed, took a deep breath, and looked Will directly in the face. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead for all we knew. And now he's alive again. He was lost and now he is found. <sighs> Look, I'm real tired. I plowed the entire North Field. Thank you. I think I'll just go to bed. Won't you come into the party? Just for a few minutes? Will hesitated. He could see the people through the window, dancing, eating, full of joy. 
The light in the music called him. Please, Will. We don't know if the older brother ever listened to his father. We don't know if he ever forgave his younger brother. We don't know if he chose to go and enjoy the party. But what we do know is that if he stayed outside, he missed out on many good things. So I want to close this out thinking about forgiveness. This is, again, our last week on forgiveness, and it's hard. And I can't do it by myself, and I doubt you can either. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to pray for us right now. I'm going to pray that we that we ask for Jesus' help when we can't forgive because it's hard, especially when they're mean to you and it happens over and over and over. Um, but again, it's so important to ask for that help and he will give you the peace and the understanding that you need. So I'm going to close this out in prayer. God, thank you for this story that Jesus told to help us understand. God, we understand that the Father is, is like you, God, and all he is doing is waiting for us to come. And waiting for us to ask for forgiveness. And sometimes we act like the younger brother. And sometimes we have our the older brother, God. And that's, a, that's the reason Jesus told this story. Help us to show forgiveness. Help us to ask for forgiveness. It's hard. And in both ways, God. And we can't do it without you. I pray if there's anyone that's heard this message. And they don't understand what it means to be saved and forgiven of sins. God, they would ask somebody. They would look in your word. And and pray with someone, God, that to, to know what that feels like to be washed clean of their sins. We love you, God, and we need you. All God's people said, amen. So we're going to end with our song again. But before we do, I've got a couple announcements. Um, there's going to be some big announcements coming soon about the Easter egg hunt. We have tons of eggs. As you can see, we have tons of lights. So what we're going to be doing... Hopefully the week of Easter is we're going to be trying to get out the glow-in-the-dark egg hunt to your house. So we're going to be coming up with kits that you can come to get at the church with eggs and lights. Because we're super bummed that we can't do the egg hunt. I mean, this is an event that we've done for years. And we want, we want you to get the same experience at your house. We want to remember this time coming up in a few weeks of the, the death and resurrection of Jesus in a fun way. We're going to be looking at eggs, but that's not the whole reason for Easter. But stay tuned. Look us up on Facebook for that because eggs and lights are coming your way. Um, again, next week we're going to start with humility and looking at how Jesus changes everything. Um, I'll see you guys back here next Wednesday night. Again, if anybody is interested in doing a Google Meet, I know a lot of you are doing Google Meets with your teachers. So um, you can message me, you can text me, you can um, drop a comment, and we can do a small group Google Meet anytime. I, I would love to do one tomorrow night with anybody who would like to. So I want everybody singing and dancing to this song. It goes perfect with our story. See you guys next week. Shadows on me Don't you forget It's your head It's too much You say before it You talk about the life It's as good as it is